The time has come. Preseason is here. That means we're at that much closer to the regular season. And Ramley Talk is back for season five. Let's get it started. Maybe you from the 1970s, when the Los Angeles Rams was known as the Prison Forsum because of that defensive line. Or maybe you were in the city of St. Louis, the gateway to the Midwest, where the greatest show on turf brought home the first ever Super Bowl championship. Or maybe you in the here and now, with the Rams back in LA, winners of Super Bowl 56. You can rock Eric Dickinson. You can rock Marshall, Fowl, Isaiah, Bruce, and Kurt Warner. Or maybe you rock in Cooper Cup, Aaron Donnay, Matthew Stafford. It doesn't matter. But when it comes to this, it's all about the Los Angeles Rams. Horns up, Rams house. Time to talk Rams football. What's up, Ram Nation? How am I Ramley doing? Yes, your boy is back. And you see the hat. Yeah, I went ahead and got me a little, you know, new LA Rams. I had to, had to get some merch to rock with the Rams, all right? You know, had to redo my stuff, you know. I hope y'all like the changes that I made. You know, we got a little stuff here, a little outline at the top here with the name of the podcast and then all the platforms that you can hear us on, even though it's a lot more than that. But welcome to season five of Ramley Talk. I mean, the episode that I did with Aaron Donner and the draft is also part of season five. But this right here is the official kickoff to season five of Ramley Talk. We're in preseason mode, which means we're on our way to the regular season of the NFL season. And it's going to be a fun one. All right. Thank y'all for listening. You can catch Ramley Talk on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, plus whatever else you'd like to listen to your podcast. Is it? But these are the main ones right here on top. The video version of this show you can see on our YouTube channel, the Playmakers Blog YouTube channel, all right? So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell on YouTube so you can know when every time we post a new video, whether it be for this podcast, which is Ramley Talk, whether it be for Shooting Lightside, whether it be for Bearing Down the Gridiron, whatever the case may be, follow the Playmakers Blog. We got you covered, all right? Like I said, season five. And most of you who've been rocking with me throughout this uh, journey of Ramley Talk, thank you. I'm in the fifth season. We have over 8,000 downloads. I'm very thankful for everybody in Ram Nation, for all my Ramley to continue to support me in this one. So y'all know how we always do. We saw season preview because, you know, I really don't cover preseason like that for obvious reasons. So I go through the season. But those of you who are new, I go through the season schedule week by week. Make some predictions, see what the Rams would do. Last year I did pretty good. I had us going, I think I had us going 11, around 11 and 6 or 10 and 7. I think I went 11 and 6. We went 10 and 7, made the playoffs as I predicted, but we got beat, you know, whatever the case may be. But I'm getting all of that. But right now we have some news outside of the Rams organization, and uh, I'm going to get to them right now. Now, those of you who are new, you will see that. All the uh, Los Angeles Rams news that I come up with, we become from this guy right here, Stu Jackson, the senior staff writer for the Los Angeles Rams. Hopefully, one of these days, like even me, Mr. Jackson, because he's been a vital part of the show, whether he knows it or not. But I love the way he brings the news. So I can go right ahead and make him make sure that the Ram Nation across the entire globe has it. All right. So his his first one was up here. It says uh, Ernest Jones expected to return to practice and whatnot, and Updates on Puka Nakua, Ari Jackson, Jonah Jackson, and Rob and Rob Hainstein. So I can say here, this is what Stu has came up with. He says, uh, Rams head coach Sean McVay said linebacker Ernest Jones the fourth with a knee in, with knee issue is expected to return to practice 
was expected to return to practice on yesterday, which he did. He had not participated in practice since August 9th with the knee with the knee issue that kept him sideline doing OTAs. So he said, quote, we got good news on Jones, which Sharma Ray said after practice on Tuesday. As for wide receiver Puka Nakua, Abbas Alamo Kerry Jackson, Jonah Jackson, and Robin Henstein. Sean McVay did not have any updates as it relates to practice with the Cowboys instead of practicing with the Chargers. Yeah, they have a game coming up against the Chargers, but they are doing joint practice with the uh, Dallas Cowboys still, even after the game. Moving right along, Rams wave kicker Turner, Tanner Brown, you know, uh, he was competing with Ricky kicker Joshua Cartney. For the spot for kicker and Carney looked they very good against the Cowboys, you know, uh, did very well, and the, and that is his job for the time being. As long as he don't does, as long as he doesn't do anything to mess it up, that is his, that is his job. The Ricky, you can say the Ricky officially won the job to be honest, because what else can you say? Now, the Rams signed D lineman Carlos Watkins. All right, the Rams added. Defense lineman Carlos, veteran Carlos Watkins on Wednesday. Watkins recently played for the Arizona Cardinals, but he only played two games because he had a bicep injury that sidelined him for the rest of the season. Before his time with Arizona, he played for the Dallas Cowboys for two seasons. He was a fourth round draft pick out of Clemson by Houston by the Houston Texans in 2017, where he played first. Where he played his first four seasons in the NFL. That he had. He had recorded 139 total tackles, six sets across 71 games with 37 starts in seven seasons. So he had some depth to our uh, defensive line. You can't be mad at that. You know, when you lose Aaron Donald to retirement, that is a big void to fill, and you have to find different ways to fill that void. Nevertheless, we keep adding depth to our defensive line. I've been hearing great things out of out of camp about Javon, Gerard Verse. You know, Brandon Fit Brandon Fitz. I've been hearing great things about them. So it's gonna be kind of weird, but an interesting season to see without 99 in the middle of that defense. But hey, we'll we'll find a way, we'll make things happen, and we'll see what we do from there. All right. So that's what we at. Now the Rams did have a preseason game on Sunday, if I remember correctly, and they beat the Cowboys 13 to 12. You know, uh, of course, as you know, those of you who've been Rams fans for a long time, we all know that Sean McVay doesn't play his starters. So, no Matthew Stafford, no uh, Karen Williams, no Puka Nakua, no Cooper Cup, none, none of the starters. Hey, Blake Karen didn't even suit up. Josh Burson and Brandon Fitz didn't even suit up for this game. So, a lot of guys playing backup roles are trying to find ways to make the team and do stuff like that. All right. We did win. Uh, we, we had Stetson Bennett starting. Stetson Bennett went 24, went 24 for 38, 224 yards passing with one touchdown and four interceptions. Yeah, he threw a lot of interceptions. But that one touchdown was the most important one because that was the last thing that happened in the game when he threw a game one a touchdown pass with about, what, four seconds remaining in the game? Great resiliency, great command. We got to work on all your interceptions with basically the same thing. Not seeing the underneath coverage and you throwing it right to him. So, but you know, it is what it is. This it, is technically his rookie year because he didn't, he wouldn't even win the team last year. Now, whatever the case may be, glad he's past that and then glad he's with the team because we drafted him last year, but he went with the team for the season. So, basically, this is his rookie year for Stetson Bennett, even though. He might be the third string quarterback because we do have Jimmy Garoppolo on, on the on the roster, and we probably want to have him as the backup behind Matthew Stafford. Uh, we do have Boston Scott on the team. He had 15 carries for 68 yards. Nice to see Boston Scott. Uh, Jordan Willington had a great game. Six catches, 74 yards uh, on nine targets. He looked good. He was able to catch the ball. He was able to make big plays. Able to move the chains when it needed to be. So I like what I've seen out of Jordan Willington. Tyler Davis on the defensive side had a great game. He had six total tackles, three solo. He had two tackles for loss. You know, he was in the backfield a lot for the Dallas Cowboys, who started Trey Lance on their side. 
I've seen a lot of good things from the defense. Uh, Josh Cartney went both went two for two on field goals and uh, one extra point that gave the Rams the one point lead, which led to the one point victory. So pretty good, you know. I really don't cover preseason like that, but I will give you some news and notes from preseason when I can. So great job for the Rams. Next up will be Saturday, August seventeenth, when they when they play the Los Angeles Chargers in the Battle of L.A. That game will be at four or five Pacific time. If you're on the East Coast like I am, that'd be 7.05 our time. And then the following week, they'll play at the Houston Texans. And that will pretty much get everything ready for the regular season. All right. So those are the news and notes for uh, this week's Ramley Talk segment. Now, when we come back from our break, let's get ready for the season. All right. Let's make some predictions. Let's go through weeks one through five because we have an early bye week. They gave us an early bye week. We have a bye week in week six. So first five games we're going to go through heading into our bye week. We'll be back. The largest egg producer finds bird flu in chickens at a Texas plant? Weather. Devastating tornadoes rip through the heart of the United States. Inspiration. A breast cancer survivor completed the journey of chemotherapy. And now begins a future one of matrimony or sports. Michael Jordan is shown on a photo with Diddy. LeBron James has a video extolling the virtues of a Diddy party. This has been yet another <laughs> Beating a Dead Horse presentation. We got you covered. BS3 Network in association with Comey Media Incorporated proudly present The Morning Shift with Cole Johnson live every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. Drew Willingham. In this case, yeah, you put the blame on Kyle Shanahan for apparently not preparing the team enough for the overtime rules, supposedly. Cole Johnson. Peyton was considered the winner, and he was the darling of all darlings for Gerald. With a special appearance by Tyrone Alize McDummy. Ain't nobody calling me. Takes delete. Join these two football enthusiasts as they give you Total Football Talk live every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central on the Sertoba Media and the Comey Media YouTube channels. Sports fans are gearing up. Would it be for the madness of March? Would it be for the Super Bowl? Or even a little thing called WrestleMania. You can get all that at Fanatics. Where they have a wide selection of gear from every league, including the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, the NCAA, and the WWE. So go on to show that pride, that passion, that dedication fan that you are by whipping your team, your league, all your favorite players. Fanatics, official license, everything. Cool McCain. You thought you wanted Gunther against Chad Gable, but you didn't. And I'm going to tell you why. Chad Gable would take everything that Gunther's done and bury it. The Playmaker. It was on site. AJ Styles walked out there seeing LA Knight. Oh, okay. Man. We, LA Knight hopped out the car. Let's go. Yeah! Break down everything in TNA, AEW, and all of the WWE programming. Join these two kings, monarchs of wrestling, live every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Central on the Play Caller Sports Talk YouTube channel. This is a BS3 Network presentation. do a TED talk but I don't have anything to talk about yet. I'm getting there. Life is for the living. We're not here that long. You can learn anything you want to learn without any money spent. What do I really enjoy? What do I really want out of life? I am your host WIZE. Are you in a life holding pattern? 
Well, this is for you. Welcome to the Stuck In My Mind podcast. Live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk here as we get ready to dive into our season preview. As you can see, those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you see the five games that we're going to talk about. If you are listening to me on your favorite podcast platform without the video, just listen to the audio. As you can, as I'm going to tell you here, Detroit game. We have the Detroit Lions, the Arizona Cardinals, the, 40, the San Francisco 49ers, Chicago Bears, and the Green Bay Packers coming up in this episode of our season preview. Now that we got that going, first order of business is to uh, go over our uh, beloved Los Angeles Rams. All right. So in doing so, let's go back to what took place last season. And what took place last season, the Rams went 10-7. and That was second in the NFC West. That was the sixth seed in the NFC, not six in the NFL, six in the NFC. When you got defeated by the Detroit Lions in the wild card round, the most competitive wild card game of that whole wild card round, all the other ones was pretty much blowouts. This was the only competitive game. Uh, the Lions won. I think they won by three or four points, if I remember correctly. I don't got to score on top of my head. But, yeah. Great season. It was a good season. Uh, we bounced back pretty good from the most seat previous season when we went 5-12, and 12, like coming off a Super Bowl championship. But a lot of people didn't expect the Rams to do what they did. I was one of them who did expect it. I had them going like 11-6 and or 10-7. And, and I was very happy to be around the, be in the ballpark of this, of this nice, good season that nobody had a lot of faith in the Rams. Matthew Stafford completed 62.6% of his passes, throwing for 3,965 yards, 24 touchdowns to 11. And Sosa Karen Williams was the lead man in the backfield, having 20, 228 carries, 1,144 yards of rushing with 12 rushing touchdowns. He also had 32 catches with 206 yards with three touchdowns, but he only played in 12 games. Puka Nakua, the leading receiver for last year with Cooper Cup battling injuries. He only played 12 games and uh, beat Cooper Cup. Cub had 95 catches, 737 yards with five touchdowns in those 12 games, but Pukna Cub became the number one receiver last year. 105 catches in his rookie season, by the way. 105 catches, 1,486 yards receiving, six touchdowns. He also had 12 carries for 87 yards and a worst touchdowns. Pukna Cub broke the rookie season record for catches and receiving yards in the season with both 105 catches and the 1,486 yards receiving. He broke rookie records on that one. As mentioned earlier in the show, and I did an episode on it, the retirement of Aaron Donald took place. We did re-sign wide receiver Demarcus Robinson, which is a good signing. We also kept Kevin Dotson and linebacker Christian Roseboom, which is good. Sign, which is a good keys right there. Key additions, though. However, we picked up offensive guard Jonah Jessup from the Detroit Lions. We also added Tre'Davious White from the Buffalo Bills. Now, if he can stay healthy. With your Davis right, we have a nice secondary back there. We also bought back Darius Williams from the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, he was with us and he went to the Jaguars for two years. Now he's back with the Rams. All right. We brought in safety Cameron Carl from the Washington Commanders. And obviously, we talked about it earlier. Jimmy Garoppolo from the Las Vegas Raiders, now the backup quarterback behind Matthew Stafford. We did have some key draft picks in here that you see at the bottom, but instead of doing that, I can just do this. As you can see, our first pick, first time we was picking in the first round in six years. We finally had a first round pick, and we didn't trade it away. Jared first was our pick at pick 19 for Florida State defensive end, and then our second round pick, we went back to the Florida State Seminoles and Brandon Fix. And in our second round pick, and surprise pick for us, we got Blake Crom in the third round. The national championship running back from the University of Michigan. Over there with John Harbaugh. Then we had two picks in the third round. We came back and grabbed Cameron K Kitchens from Miami. Brandon Jackson from Washington State. Taylor Davis from Clemson was a great pick. 
Joshua Cartney, who, who played great in the preseason opener, Jordan Wilmington, who also played great in the preseason opener, Jordan Wilmington. All right. So Tyler Davis, Josh Cartney, and Jordan Wilmington all played great in the first preseason game. All of them played great. Very great. Very wonderful debut in the NFL. Now, when we get to the regular season, we will we, we still see the same thing that we saw in preseason? Probably not because it's a more faster game then. But all three guys looked great. We didn't see Fitz. We didn't see Verse. We didn't see Chrome. Uh, I don't remember if I seen Hitches. I don't. I got to go back and watch the film. If you did, you can let me know in the comment section. But I don't remember seeing Hitches. But nevertheless, this is what we drafted. All right. Pretty good, decent draft. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys, see what they can do. When the regular season gets here, especially Joy Winton, Joy Winton look like he's a keeper. Uh, Jared Verse, Brandon Fitz, and Blake Coleman, I think they are a lot, so that's part of the reason why they didn't play in the first game. Hitchens should be a good keep. Tyler Davis is making the name for himself. Josh Carton, you already got this. Seemingly, you already got the starting job for the kicker, so that's good for you. Joy Winton, you're making a name for yourself to be in that rotation. All right, so we'll see how that goes on that one. All right, now. Time to get to the season preview. You've seen this slide earlier. I'm sorry again. Here are the five games. The Detroit Lions, the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, Chicago Bears, and the Green Bay Packers. Beginning with a rematch from the NFC wild card game that ended the Rams season in the Motor City. The Rams will go back to the Motor City on Sunday night, week one, against the Detroit Lions. Here's what the Detroit Lions have done during their uh, offseason. Uh, first of all, they went 12 and 5. They are the NFC North champions. They were second in the NFC behind the San Francisco 49ers. Yep, they defeated us in the wild card round. They defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the divisional round before being defeated by the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Where a lot of people, including myself, said that the Detroit Lions blew that one. They should have won that one, and San Francisco should not have been in the Super Bowl, but things happen. Jared Goff completed 67.3% of his passes last year, throwing for 4,575 yards with 30 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. David Montgomery, 219 carries, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns. Josh Gibbs, who was the backup with the one-two punch for the Detroit Lions in the backfield, 182 carries, 945 yards rushing with 10 touchdowns. He also had 52 catches, 316 yards and a touchdown. Number one wide receiver who got an extension, by the way. I'm a Rod St. Brown, 119 catches, 1,515 yards receiving with 10 touchdowns. Sam Laporta, the tight end, though. So becoming the star tight end for the Detroit Lions, 86 catches, 889 yards with 10 touchdowns. Now, Jared Goff got that big payday for his first production of last year with a four year, 212 extension. Not only him, but his number one rival, right Amara St. Brown, got a extension with four years, $120 million plus dollar extension. Now, they did draft it to Rare Arnold, the cornerback from Alabama in the first round, which was a great pick for them. They bring in wide right receiver Donovan Peoples, Peoples Jones from the Cleveland Browns, defense alignment DJ Reader from the Cincinnati Bengals, and then Carlton Davis, cornerback from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a trade. As you all know, we talked about it a little earlier. It was a one point win for the Detroit Lions in the wild card round. 24-23 win over the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Great win for them. But in this rematch, however, however, I think sweet revenge is on the mind of the Rams. And I think we take week one. I think we take week one. And it'll be great. For you to start off the season by taking week one to get the season started off one and know like we did last year when we had to face the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Just like we did the previous year, we ended our season in Seattle. Didn't win that game. Seattle was able to get into the playoffs. Then we came back to start the next season in Seattle, and we put a beating on Seattle. I don't think we'll put a beating on Detroit, though. But I do think we might have come out with a field goal victory against the Detroit Lions. So we start off one and know. And the uh, NFC North champion start off on one. Week two is a visit to the desert to take on the Arizona Cardinals. We have been beating on the Arizona Cardinals for a very long time right about now. So, nevertheless, uh, Callum Murray, the starting quarterback for the uh, Arizona Cardinals, 65.7% completion last year. 
1,799 yards passing, 10 touchdown passes, five interceptions. We got a quarterback rating over 89.4. He also went 44 times with 244 yards and three touchdowns in only eight games because he ended up having another season in the injury again. So only four, only eight games this time, halfway through the season. That's all. James Conner, the number one running back for the Cardinals, 208 carries. With 1,400 rushing yards with seven rushing touchdowns. He also added two passing touchdowns on 27 catches. Trey McBride, somehow the number one receiver for the Arizona Cardinals that nobody thought of. 81 catches, 825 yards with three touchdowns. Marquise Hollywood Brown had 51 catches, 574 yards, and four touchdowns. But he is no longer a part of the Arizona Cardinals. He is now part of the Kansas City Chiefs. Key distance and signings for the Arizona Cardinals are Desmond Water when they trade with Atlanta. With the Atlanta Falcons now, he sits behind Kyler Murray as the number two guy on the list. They drafted wide right receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. in their first round pick from the University of Ohio State. They bring in DJ Dallas from the Seattle Seahawks to most of their backfield. They run the back crew. They bring in wide right receiver Zay Jones from the Justin Jaguars. Awards. Now, if Zay Jones can stay healthy, it'll be a nice addition to the team. Problem is, A. Jones can't stay healthy. So if he can stay healthy, we have a little interesting dynamic with Marvin Harrison Jr. on one side. You got Zay Jones on the slide. Trey McBride. See, he can build on what he did last year. He might have a decent core in the receiver down in the desert for Arizona. Offensive guard, offensive tackle, so I say Jonah Williamson from Cincinnati. That's a good pickup. That's a good, that's a good pickup. So if you want to, if you want to protect Kyle Murray and make sure Kyle Murray can get through a full season. Getting a guy like Jonah Williams from Cincinnati is a good pick. I will give you that. Defense tackle, Justin Jones from Chicago, and uh, Sean Muffy Burton, the cornerback from Tennessee. Uh, pretty good pickup, all right? Now, as I said, we've been beating up on Arizona for quite a while. We went 2-0 against the Arizona Cardinals. Week 6, we beat them 26-9 in Los Angeles, and then week 14, we beat them 37-14 in Glendale, Arizona. So we back to whooping on Arizona. Probably gonna be doing it again. Because don't see a lot of see nice pickups. Now the biggest pickup is drafting Mars and Harrison Jr. That's the biggest pickup. Okay. Now Jonah Williams, as I said, a great pickup for them. You need you need you need you need to be able to protect Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray has been getting injured a lot. But even with those picks. We going I still feel like we have the better teams and we will continue to whoop on y'all as we've been doing. So I have the Rams starting off 2-0. I went at Detroit. I went at Arizona. Two world games with two dubs. Now I could be wrong. We could very lose lose the first game of the year. It is Detroit, and Detroit gonna be on a high from what they did last year. But I do see us getting payback. So we starting off 2-0. We're starting off 2-0. Okay. That's the way I see it. We starting off 2-0. We're going in, in the right direction here and whatnot. So that's how I see it. But we're going to take a quick break right here. Then when we come back, we're going to continue with our season preview with uh, our biggest rival for the home opener. That's right, the San Francisco 49ers. We'll be back. I, I <laughs> love you, you <laughs> morons. <laughs> you kiss on the block, <laughs> new addition. Dear whatever the law firm is. <laughs> Sincerely, the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> ben Affleck, <laughs> Matt Damon. Go f yourself again, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Into the Net FC. Killing it, Bappe just all of a sudden finally understood his role, and I think he finally understood that everything Killing it, Bappe has accomplished already. You know, there is still a hell of a lot wait, waiting for him in the future. Killing it, Bappe is only 24 years old. He has accomplished so much, and you know what? Kylian Mbappe has not even reached his prime. Finally seeing, you know, the Marcus Rashford we have been hoping for for such a long time, you know. 
But you know, this game, you know, after after everything Manchester United has been, you know, doing lately, you know, th this was actually the ultimate test, you know, to see if Manchester United, you know, all, honestly was all of a sudden for real. I I explain this. The United States maybe they have to suffer this loss as a lesson to learn to prepare for the future, because four years from now, the World Cup is in not one, not two, but three countries: the United States of America, Canada and Mexico. Into the NetFC is available on all streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Get yeah, Mouse Entertainment with Paramount Plus. Stream new movies such as Mean Girls, Transformers Rise of the Beast, and Good Burger 2 with Paramount Plus. Stream live sports such as the UEFA Champions League, the NFL on CBS, the PGA Tour, and March Madness. Cats hit CBS shows such as Fire Country, Ghost, NCIS, and more, but also catch exclusive originals for Paramount Plus such as Special Arts Lioness, The Family Stallones, and the hit series Halo. The new streaming home of Showtime. Watch Showtime original series and movies when you sign up with Paramount Plus with Showtime. Make it a fun, action-packed adventure for the whole family and create kid-friendly profiles for the little ones. So much to stream with Paramount Plus with over 45,000 full episodes from BET, CBS, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, and more. Paramount Plus plan starts at $5.99, but if you subscribe today, you get a free trial. Paramount Plus, Mountains of Entertainment. In a world where chronicles of the past are brought to the streams, whether the content is relatable or completely beyond your realm of life, there is no shadow of a doubt that this show is absolutely full of shenanigans. Get ready for Deep Willy in the Evening. This Sunday at 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on Sertova Media where the struggle is real to be awesome. Whether it's the men's college game, the way that this season has been going, uh, yeah, anything is possible. The women's college game, and how passionate Angel Reese was at that press conference, they got their mojo now. The WNBA, AJ Woods and Brianna Stewart won it too, followed by Brittany Griner, Aaliyah Boston, Jackie Young, or the NBA, the Lakers. Had a 0 0.8 chance of winning. And then what happened in the fourth quarter? LeBron James by himself outdid the Clippers. You will get any and all of the information right at your fingertips or your earlobes. Join the playmaker as he breaks down all things basketball in shooting lights out. On the Playmakers blog, network, YouTube channel, and where you can find podcasts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ramley Talk here on this lovely Thursday, August 15, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following Ramley Talk. I'm very thankful, very appreciative of each and every one of y'all. Now that you see those of you who are watching it on YouTube, you see the graphic of the Rams hosting the 49ers in the home opener. That is right. That is week three, ladies and gentlemen. That is the home opener for the Los Angeles Rams after back-to-back -back road games at Detroit, at Arizona, which I had them winning both games with the caveat that they could lose the Detroit game because it is in Detroit, by the way. But right now, I have them sitting at 2-0 right now. And we're going against our arch rivals, the San Francisco 49ers. All right. Now, the Niners, 12-5, the NFC West champions, the number one seed in the NFC. Defeated the Green Bay Packers in the divisional round because they had to buy with us being the number one seed. They defeated the Detroit Lions in the AMC Championship game, as I mentioned earlier when we previewed the Detroit Lions game, where Detroit should have won that game, but some costly decisions gave the 49ers the win before they got defeated by the Kansas City Chiefs for the second consecutive time in the Super Bowl. Uh, I believe the other one was back in 2020 when they met in the Super Bowl, and Kansas City won that one as they won three 
in the last four years for the Kansas City Chiefs. Brock Purdy, 69.4 completion percentage, throwing for 4,280 yards through the air, 31 passing touchdowns to 11 in the substance, a quarterback rate of 113. Christian McCaffrey, 272 carries with 1,459 rushing yards with 14 rushing touchdowns. He also had 67 catches with 560. Four yards through the air with seven passing touch with seven receiving touchdowns. All right. Debo Samuel Sr. He had 32 carries with 225 yards with a rushing touchdown. But he did most of his damage on this past season through the air with 60 catches, 892 receiving yards, and seven receiving touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk, this is an interesting thing going on right now out in the, in Santa Clara. 75 catches, 1342 receiving yards with seven touchdowns. Who is currently holding in? Now, those of you who don't know what holding in means, that means he's in training camp. He's at the pursuit. He's around the team, but he's not participating. Holding out is when you're not around the team, period, to participate. Holding in is when you're there, you're just not participating, but you're in meetings, you're, you're doing you're doing the other stuff, but you're not participating in practice and all that other stuff. Now, George Kittle, 65 catches, 1,020 receiving yards with his touchdowns. All right. Key additions that uh, they did sign Christian McCaffrey to a two year extension that adds $38 million to so his already contract. They bring in Leonard Ford from the Buffalo Bills on the edge, and they bring in linebacker to Devon, Devon Campbell from the Green Bay Packers. We split it with the 49ers last year. They won week two in Los Angeles 30 to 23, which moved their winning streak over us at nine. And then it finally broke week 17 in the battle of the backups. It was Carson Wentz versus Sam Donald in Santa Clara. And the Rams came up with a one-point victory, 21-20, to 20, when both teams already had clinched that spot. The 49ers had already clinched the number one seed. And the Rams had already clinched the wild card spot. That's the number six seed in the uh, NFL. It won't really nothing to play for. But to snap the winning streak of the 49ers over us was a beautiful thing. Very beautiful. Man, the battle of the back of quarterback. Congratulations to Carson Wentz getting the dub. Best wishes to you out there. I think you went what Kansas City. You would I think you went Kansas City. So best wishes to you out there in Kansas City for being behind uh Patrick Mahomes. Think that'll be good for you. You'll be you'll be with Andy Reid in that regard. So good luck to you, sir. Now, how do I feel about week three? Well, even though we snapped the losing streak, I do feel like the reporter Niners might come into LA and beat the Rams. I do feel that way, you know. Starter versus starter. We haven't found a way for our starters to beat the San Francisco 49ers. And we need to find a way to beat them. But I think coming off two good whirlwinds, finally coming home, I think might be might be a little daunting for us, especially if it's a home up against the San Francisco 49ers. They might beat us by a touchdown like they did last year. So Right now, the Rams sitting at two and one on my prediction scale as of right now. Then we get to week three when we play the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field. Okay. Now, Chicago, another rough season last year, 70 10, fourth in the uh, NFC North. Justin Fields, 61.4 completion percentage, 2,562 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Quarterback rating of 86.3, 12 carries, 65, 657 rushing yards with four rushing touchdowns. Khalil Herbert was the uh, starting running back. He had 132 carries with 611 yards rushing with two touchdowns. Dante Foreman was the backup, 109 carries, 425 with four touchdowns, you know, stuff like that. DJ Moore, 96 catches. 1,364 receiving yards with eight receiving touchdowns. Cole Komet, the tight end for the Chicago Bears, 73 catches. 719 receiving yards with six touchdowns. That's all last year. Now, Justin Fields is no longer there. He's with the Pittsburgh Steelers. DJ Moore is still there. But who else did they bring in? Well, they drafted Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC with the number one overall pick. Then they came back with the ninth pick in the first round. And growl Ron Meduzier from the Washington Huskies, who will end the next championship game against Michigan. So good pickups. They bring in running back DeAndre Swift from the Philadelphia Eagles. Didn't work out in Philly for that one year. Terrible job by the Eagles. They didn't use DeAndre Swift enough. 
They traded for a wide receiver, Keaton Allen from the Los Angeles Chargers, which was a big, it was a big news on my part. I did not see that coming. Offensive guard, offensive lineman Ryan Bates in the trade from the Buffalo Bills to help boost that line and make sure Caleb Williams is protected. Cornerback Jalen Johnson they re-signed with the Chicago Bears as a free agent. They brought in safety Kevin Bright from Tennessee and safety Jonathan Owens from the Green Bay Packers. Now, before I continue, I would like to applaud the Chicago Bears for allowing Mr. Jonathan Owens to they allowed him to miss parts of training camp to go support his wife. And those of you who don't know who his wife is, that is the gymnast extraordinaire, the GOAT in gymnast Simone Biles out in Paris for the Olympics. So I want to give kudos to the Chicago Bears for doing that, allowing him to be a part of such a historic moment for him and his wife as she became the most decorated U.S. gymnast in Olympic history. But she brought home two gold medals and a silver. I mean, the girl is bad, but I'm happy that Chicago Bears allow him to go to Paris to support his wife. Very thankful for them. That's a very great gesture for them. So got to give y'all kudos to that. Now, the last time we met the Chicago Bears, it was week four back in 2021. And uh, it was in Los Angeles. And I remember that correctly because that's how we opened our season up. Matter of fact, that was our Super Bowl season, by the way. And we opened up with a 34 to 14 whomping of uh, Chicago Bears then. It did not look good for them. But now it's a new day. Three years later, it's a new dawn of a new era in Chicago. How do I feel about it, though? Just how I feel about last time. We will beat Chicago, but so for some reason, y'all probably looking at me like, you got us winning three straight world games? Yes, I was winning three straight world games. I was sneaking by the Detroit Lions. I was continuing our beating on the Arizona Cardinals. And despite the fact that people feel good about Caleb Williams with Romeo Dewsday, DJ Moore and Kidding Out as a receiving coach, along with Cool Commit. He's gonna go through some going pains to begin the season. All right. He's gonna go through some going pains. And the fact that we are in the first four weeks of the season, we at week three, or week four of the season. I think this is the time where we there'll be the last time we'll probably get used to Caleb Williams making the rookie mistakes. He'll probably learn from it. And going forward from there, and then Chicago might have actually have a good season. It's a possibility Chicago might have a good season. The NFC North is a good division to look at. Okay, now when saying that, uh, prayers go out to JJ McCartney, who was out for the season, who was fighting for the starting job for the Minnesota Vikings. Torn meniscus surgery repair, take him out for the season. But Chicago Bears should be an interesting, should be interesting to look at in the NFC North, all right. That's week four. Three are three and one right now. And the final game before I buy we could have a week six by week, which I hate, by the way. Green Bay. This time is in LA. We're not going to Lambeau Field this time. They're coming to us. It's the Green Bay Packers. Now, Green Bay. Nine and eight last year, second in the North. They was the seventh seed in the uh, in the playoffs. They went to the Dallas Cowboys and gave them a beating of a lifetime in Jerry's world in the wild card round, which everybody loved, including myself. Then they got beat by the San Francisco 49, which is not surprising whatsoever. Jordan Love, 64.2 completion percentage. He threw for 4,159 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Quarterback rating of 96.1, which is good. He also had four rushing touchdowns. Aaron Jones, who's no longer there, he is a, uh, I think he's a Minnesota Vikings, if I remember correctly now. 142 carries on the year. He had 656 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns. He also had a receiving touchdown through the air. A.J. Dillon, who's now part of another dynamic duo in the backfield with, with another run bound we'll get to later. He had 178 carries last year with 613 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns, same as Aaron Jones and also same as Aaron Jones. He had a receiving touchdown. Jaden Reed, we didn't know about him, but he did burst to the scene. 64 catches, 793 passing receiving yards with eight receiving touchdowns. He also had two rushing touchdowns. Romeo Dawes coming off his, I believe his second or third season. 59 catches, 674 receiving yards and eight receiving touchdowns. Now, I did say they lose Aaron Jones. They re-signed A.J. Dillon, and they brought in Josh Jacobs from the Las Vegas Aces. So now instead of having dealing with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, you got to deal with Josh Jacobs and AJ Dillon. 
that should be fun. Uh, they did bring back Eric Eric Wilson, linebacker. They brought in safety Xavier McKinley from the New York Giants, and they brought in kicker Greg Joseph from the Minnesota Vikings. Now, obviously, we ought to know about this because it's like four straight trips to Lambeau Field, and all four trips to Lambeau Field end up with L's for the Los Angeles Browns, including last year in Week Nine with a twenty to three pounding by the Green Bay Packers. Going into our bye week, by the way, which is another interesting thing. Yet again, we're going into a bye week, and we got to play the Green Bay Packers right before it. So last year we had a week ten bye week. We got stumped. We didn't have Matthew Stafford, and then we came back and went on a row, run on a run to get to the playoffs. Now this week we have them. And week five before I week six by week, and I do hate this week six by week. If I'm being completely honest here, I hate it. I really do. But this time they are coming to LA, and I think things are gonna be different. I think we finally catch you, Green Bay, because you're in our territory. We're not in the frozen tundras of Lambo Field this time. We are in the sunny state of California, Los Angeles be the city at soul five stadium so i think the rams would catch you ladies and gentlemen and then as you can see i was winning at detroit at arizona losing at home to the 49ers winning at chicago and coming back home to beat the green bay packers so that will put us at four and one going into the bye week ladies and gentlemen which i feel pretty good that that can actually happen i think the rams can go four and one in this Five game stress going into the bye week. Hopefully, we come out. We going into the bye week fully healthy, and we that way we come out the bye week fully healthy. Because after that, six, I'm talking seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Talking twelve more. Talking twelve games straight from that point forward. It's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be fun. But hey. We can do it. I have faith in us. So thank y'all for tuning in on that one. And uh, next week, coming out of the bye week, we're going to be talking about the Las Vegas the Las Vegas Raiders, the Minnesota Vikings, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Miami Dolphins. Two of those games are primetime games, a Thursday night and a Monday night game with an division rivalry where it's smacked in between. So that should be a fun one to cover next week. But for that being said, that will do it for this episode of Remy Talk. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching those who are watching on YouTube. If you're listening on iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, go ahead and hit that notification. Hit that subscribe button. So anytime we come back next week to talk week 7 through 10, as you saw, you'll be right here. We'll listen and watching. All right. I am the Playmaker signing off for this week. Y'all enjoy y'all week. Enjoy the game against the Los Angeles Chargers on Saturday. And we'll be back next Thursday for more Ramley Talk. Deuces. For tuning into Ramley Talk, Ramley Talk is sponsored by Fanatics, Lids, and Paramount Plus. Get your favorite sports appeal with Fanatics or Lids and get great streaming service with Paramount Plus. If you want to donate to the program, you can donate to us via Cash App, dollar sign D Playmakers. That is again, dollar sign D Playmakers. And remember, you can follow and subscribe to Ramley Talk on all podcast directories, including Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And those of you who are on Apple, leave us a great review, leave comments on how you feel about Ramley Talk in the episode that you listen to. Tune in again next time for more Ramley Talk, hosted by the Play.